Among the many things that the Muslims had created was science, philosophy, and linguistics, the science of language. To the Jews, the Hebrew Bible is the great repository of the Hebrew language in its purest form. To the Muslims, the Quran is the repository of the Arabic language in its purest form. And the Arabic language in the Quran is beautiful Arabic, and Muhammad was a great preacher and dramatic preacher, and his language is beautiful. But this became to them an ideal, and they were very much concerned with language and knowledge of it, and they began to study it in many ways. And they created some of the first great dictionaries. Now, dictionaries have always been in existence. We know there are Babylonian dictionaries from 2000 BC. In fact, they found clay tablets, which are quadrilingual dictionaries. They have four languages and columns translating Sumerian, Babylonian, and so on. Dictionaries have always been in existence, but now the Arabs began to put dictionary on, on a very large scale, a very gigantic scale, and they created a dictionary called Lisan al-Arab, which means the Arabic language which a later English scholar, Lane, translated into English. But it's a vast dictionary. Have you ever seen the Oxford English Dictionary, the 22 giant volumes? Well, the Lisan al-Arab is comparable. It's an Arabic dictionary made about a thousand years ago, which is also 10 big volumes of the Arabic language, which is very rich. But I want to tell you about one book which is so fascinating to me. They were studying the language and features of the language. One Arabic lexicographer, he decided to write a dictionary of the Arabic language which would follow what he called the true evolution of language. That is, it would deal with language as it emerges from the body. Now, what happens when you speak? When you speak, the muscles of your abdomen tighten, and if you breathe correctly, they push the diaphragm up, and the lungs push the air out. And if you're a good singer, like an opera singer, you take exercises to make sure that it works correctly. So the point is, language starts from the bottom and then comes out of your mouth. Now, in the Arabic alphabet and in the Hebrew alphabet, there are consonants for each sound. One consonant, is called ayin. And the ayin in Arabic and Old Hebrew, I mean ancient Hebrew, is voiced and very profound. In other words, when you say ayin in Arabic, it comes out from the real bottom. There's another deep sound which is unvoiced, and it's het. So het comes out without the voice, the vocal cords, and ayin is with the vocal cords. Now, what's so interesting about the ayin? This particular fellow decided he's going to start with that sound which is most profound. It comes from the very bottom of your breathing system. And that should be the first letter of the alphabet. And then, of course, after the ayin, you'll take the het, and then you'll go further up, and you'll have the aleph, and then comes the thing that stops the breathing, and that's something like ch, and then sh, and then you come to the outside, and that's p, m, b, and so on. He was following the path of speech from the real center down below all the way out to the B's and the P's and so on. So he wrote his first volume, and the first volume is called Kitab al-Ayin, the Book of the Ayin, in which he took every word beginning with the letter Ayin, and he was going to write the first volume, and then he was going to go to the next one, the next. Anyway, he wrote the Book of the Ayin, but it's a fascinating book because it shows a theory of language. He was not just being a lexicographer. He was saying, I have a theory of language and I'll present it the right way. Another interesting thing about the Arabic is that they developed an alphabet based on the Hebrew alphabet. It's the uh, same letters, Aleph, Beis, and so on. But the Arabic alphabet is the most efficient form of writing ever created. If you look at Arabic writing and you realize that once you learn how to write Arabic fluently, you don't need shorthand. In other words, Arabic script represents speech in such a way that if you write Arabic, you write as fast as anyone can speak, because every letter is simply a little switch, either a point or this or that.
And they arrange the alphabet in a very scientific fashion, too. That is, every letter is written according to the resemblance that it bears to the others. So it's a beautiful system. And of course, they took a lot of pride in calligraphy, in writing beautifully.